friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, if you guys had seen my last video, which is a book haul, is going to be an unhaul. Now, these unhauls have been getting like less and less frequent and not for anything good or bad. I've just been getting a little bit better about finding books that I know I'm going to really like and asking for books that I know I'm going to really like. So I'm not like sitting here like asking for some book that I think I might like in Christmas only to unhaul it when the time comes nor am I just buying books to buy books. Um, so these are some of the books that I've had on my shelves for a while and after like a lot of thought, some rereading, and a lot of mental deliberation, I decided that these books probably will have a better home somewhere else. And on top of that, some of them just made me angry. So there's not a lot, I think there's maybe like max 10 books in this unhaul, which isn't a lot considering I maybe hauled like 20 or so books in my last video. But yeah, let's just kind of jump right in. Alright, so this is going in literally no particular order, but one book that I'm going to be unhauling is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I read this and loved it. I think I have a vlog or something of it, but this is an adult dark academia following these set of students who are studying um, the classics under a pr pretty much a very elusive and strict professor. Now, and one day they decide to stu to take their um, studies a little more seriously than normal and try to have like, I be believe as a bacchanal which is just like a day of like a, a party of like having sex, drugs, and alcohol. Very Greek. Uh, I really did enjoy this. I gave it a 5 when I first read it. I think I have a vlog of it, like I said before, um, despite it being slow and just like kind of not my vibe. But I am unhauling it because one, I'm realizing that the I didn't read this with the most critical lens allowed. Um, and it's not something I hold every reviewer up to. It's just my own personal standard because I am a big fan of reading things critically. And like, yes, I do have other books that on these shelves that are very clearly like the authors have issues but in terms of this one I know there's a lot of like racism in this there's like hints lots of racism in this one and the author herself is just very racist and problematic and I think in terms of dark academia and just like reading about it I would like to see an author really unpack the racism and classism and elitism in the, in the concept of academia and then creating it as an aesthetic and something to be um to really look look at and uh, I guess reach for is the best way I can describe it and I feel like while this is a good like base for dark academia I would like there to be more than just rich white people committing doing what they do in dark academia I don't know I, basically what I'm trying to say is that there are better books I'm sure that are out that tackle the very clear issues with dark academia and don't romanticize it as well as having authors whom don't write such terribly racist um, ideas in their books. Good book at the time, I just don't want it on my shelves anymore. And like, I have no urge to reread it again. The next book is one that I reread last year for Trick or Treatathon, and that is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. I actually really enjoyed this book when I first read it. I think I gave it like a three or a five. I don't remember. I ended up, I still read through this entirety book and I think I gave it a two this next round. Uh, this is a YA retelling of Little Mermaid, just with sirens this time around. Um, and she is turned into a human to go ahead and kill the prince who has been hunting their kind. I I think that this book has a lot of like good things about it. I love me a good retelling. I think that the plot idea is really cool and the world building is interesting. The execution was just lacking. Like once they met each other, their personalities and their values were gone and it was just kind of like wait an entire game of waiting for her secret to come out or for them to declare their love for each other in the big betrayal moment. So it is good but I think it could be a lot better and I don't have any plans to really reread this or keep it on my shelves or it's something that I'm just like told to keep it there. So it's going and it's hopefully gonna find a better home than what I can give it. The next one makes me kind of sad because I don't think I'll be continuing on with the rest of the DC like superhero books which sucks because I love DC and I think they need a lot more like pros positive rep aside from their um, animated stuff. Their animated stuff is top tier but their live action and like some other like retelling stuff not so great. That is Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. This is a retelling of Diana's of the Amazon Smith slash Wonder Woman. I enjoyed it. I think I gave this a 3 or a 4 star out of 5. However, again, there's just nothing really keeping me from keeping this book on my shelves. Um, and I'm, it, I just wasn't interested and in, I didn't enjoy the execution of the plot twists or anything. Like the plot twist in it was very obvious to me, but I also did study Greek. I also am a very big Greek myth nut in some instances. 
So I do see where like people may not notice it and it'll be a big shock for them. But for me, it just wasn't that huge of a shock. And I think that again, this could find a better home that is not mine. Cause I feel like this is more focused for a younger audience over an old, like a younger YA audience over an older YA one, if that makes sense. So hopefully someone else will find it and they'll enjoy it. And I hear my cat. I swear every time that I start to film nowadays, my cat's like, I wanna be in the room. No, I don't. I wanna be out of the room. No, I don't. I want you to be out of the room with me while I'm out of the room. My buddy. All right, the next book is an adult a romance that I really was just hoping to love. If, so this is a cat that you guys will most typically hear in all of my videos. I've had him since he was a kitten. He has been on this channel since he was a kitten. Nico, say hi to the camera. Sherman is a quiet one. Well, he's not so quiet anymore. He's a little more chatty. But Nico is the most chatty one, aren't you? You went from being my demonic purr box as a kitten to a husky in a cat shell. Because he is also shedding like a husky. Yeah, couple, yeah, fight. Try me. Hmm. I got a good right hook. The next book is a romance that I really, I really wanted to love, and that is Something to Talk About by Meryl Wilsner. This is an adult romance following this young woman, Emma, who is uh, photographed with her boss, Joe, when Emma makes her laugh. Emma makes Joe laugh. Now, the tabloids are going around being like, oh yeah, they're dating now. And because Joe is tired of having people ask her the same question, they decide to have a fake dating scenario only to really... Um, not even fake dating. They are um, just trying to keep it under wraps and not really talking about whether or not they're dating. And that kind of allows things to stir and for them to start feeling things for each other. I gave this a three out of five star. It's not a bad book. It, it wasn't like horrible in any way, shape or form. I found it to be a really enjoyable and quick book. I just felt like it was very middle of the road. The plot twists were very chill and it wasn't just that like, Nothing really really kept me wanting to keep going and keep reading and just like really enjoy the book. Like it's a very quick read, very easy to read novel, but there was nothing really just pulling me toward the romances, the romance or pulling me toward either one of the characters. <laughs> the next book is one that I actually did a full-fledged vlog on when I'm during my reread and that is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This is basically Avatar set in Africa. It follows a young girl named Zella who uh, watched the her who watched magic go away from her when she was a young child. And now that she's like a 16 teenager-ish, she now has a chance to bring magic back, but if she fails this quest, magic will be gone forever and ever. I gave this like a one star during my reread. I gave it a five when I first read it. So that tells you a lot. Um, I think the idea is there and I like it, but like I said in my vlog, it just lacks execution and I feel like the uh, it, it just reads like a fan fiction. And not that it's a bad thing, but in terms of like following av the first plot, the first like what, two seasons of Avatar, three seasons of Avatar's plot, as well as the romances that were there, I wasn't pulled to any character. There wasn't any surprises for me because the plot felt so familiar. So it was just one of those things where I had high hopes and I was hoping I would enjoy it in my reread and have a reason to keep it in my shelves and continue on with the series. But at the end of it, I was just very underwhelmed. And I feel like there could have been, um, like, I get why it became so popular and why the hype was there. I do think that this is kind of the start of the publishing industry pushing authors to publish their books at an earlier time instead of really setting them down and hammering it especially for younger authors who don't quite maybe have a voice in the publishing industry yet and we definitely see it with children of blood and bone it definitely needed more drafting and just more plotting out overall and then i think with this book or and other books that came out similarly this time we start to see more of that like dramatic role in terms of like books getting pushed out. The next book is the first in a series and I did read the second book a couple of months ago which is why I can say this very gladly and that is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I'm so sad about this book, so very sad. I love this cover but this is a YA mystery novel situation following young Stevie Bell who gets to attend the ever elusive um, Ellingham Academy where you basically study only one specific um, topic and that is like your 
it's basically like a major to say the least and she hers is true crime and one of the and she decides to do her project on the case that has been unsolved in this academy where the um owner's family was brutal was kidnapped and killed and their bodies have still not been found or found out who killed them i kind of enjoyed the first book the first book was interesting to me i gave it a three and i had hopes that it would grow from there but i read the second book via audiobook a couple months ago and was just not it i wasn't intrigued by it at all i wasn't a fan of what was going on and what had happened within the book the next book is actually one that ended up on my disappointing list of 2021 and that is something to talk about by Melissa de la Cruz. This is a YA contemporary following young Jasmine de la Santa Santos who is basically the perfect student. Who is basically the perfect student. Good grades, cheerleader, national honors. Then she receives a scholarship that will basically pay off her entire tuition for college and her parents like no, you can't apply for college, we are actually undocumented, and now she is shaken and tries to figure out this entire situation and tries to, you know, whatever. I did a vlog of this, I did a wrap-up, I did a disappointing video. I did not like this book. Did not like it, will not like it. Um, was very upset by the contents of the books, and I don't want to rant because I am going to run out of air at some point or something's just gonna come down and smite me for just repeating how much I was disappointed in this book. The next book is actually The Uglies by Scott Westerfield. Uh, this is a YA, I can't really see, it's so white, like it's gonna mess up my white balance, I can feel it. Okay, um, I'm gonna just take it off because it's kind of hurting my eyes to start the reflection. But this is a YA dystopian, kind of one of the first ones out there following the society where young kids um, are born ugly. I don't know what that means but when they turn 16 they are sent off to a facility where they basically have like plastic surgery done on their face and this one girl does not want to be um to have the surgery and runs away which creates this whole entire debacle and she uncovers something mysterious going on inside it i first read this book in middle school i was like 11. i have had plans to finish this series since middle school it is, I have reread this book multiple times with multiple plans to reread it. I am now 25. I first started this series when I was 11. I think it's safe to say that it's time for me to give up and let it go. I'm sure the series was great. I thoroughly en enjoyed it when I first read it, when I reread it the second time, when I reread it the third time. But clearly I have no plans to continue on with the series and it's time I accepted that. The next one is actually a collection of um, poetry, and that is Fierce Fairy Tales, Poems and Stories, Sister Your Soul by Nikita Gill. I actually do enjoy a lot of Nikita Gill's books. I have a couple of her poetry collections, and I have enjoyed them. This was one that I just did not enjoy. I just couldn't get into any of the writing, any of the book, like the poems, the um, short bits of prose. And like the more, like I want to keep it just to keep my collection of this author whole but it's taking up space and there's something in my heart that won't let me let books take up space when I just did not like them. Like I have a few, I will, I will allow for a handful of books I did not like to continue taking up space on these shelves. A handful. But if I could just like, if it's just one thing where I'm like, I, I can live without it, I'm going to live without it. So this is a book that I'm going to live without and hopefully someone else will ha find something in this book and something that can um, resonate in with the poetry. I really resonated with her previous poetry books, so I'm keeping those, but this one's gotta go. The next one is one that I read, DNF'd actually, last year, and that is Tiger Lily by Jodi Lynn Anderson. This is a YA retelling of Peter Pan told through Tinkerbell's eyes as she kind of watches um, Tiger Lily traverse through Wonderland. The book sounded interesting. I had issues with the concept considering Jodelyn Anderson is a white woman writing about Tiger Lily and then I read it and it's about Tinkerbell watching Tiger Lily, stalking Tiger Lily, calling Tiger Lily exotic and referring to her as some type of lioness or predator or some really aggressive being which I'm sitting here like I understand the need to make said references because of like I suppose how media portrayed Native American women and just Native Americans in general. But that does not mean that I agree with it and I think this is how you should write a, Na a Native American character. 
um, I got through maybe like 10 pages of this book and read the bit where he talked about where she talked about how like beautiful she was because she was so exotic looking and how she like prowled through the forest like a tiger or a leopard and I was like no no so unhauling I don't know if anyone will pick this up I hope not um, all I can hope is that the author has learned from her lesson, but sometimes authors like this seldom do. The second to last book is one that I read again in 2021. It was one of the books that I read on my boyfriend and I's lovely little trip to Zion, and that is The Cold in Her Bones by Peter Nelvin. Arsdale, this is a YA retelling of the Medusa myth, where this curse travels through the land every year and takes young girls. Now this one girl, our main character, is kind of exempt from this rule because she is not Liv in the village. That is until one day her only friend that she has ever made goes missing because of said curse. I I enjoyed this book. I gave it a three. It was just very slow and again there are a lot of important messages in here of like female friendship and the power of that as well as just generational healing but I was just not enthralled with this writing. It was like slow or like the pacing I should say. It was like slow then fast, then slow, and they just couldn't figure out what it wanted to do to help move the plot along. Which makes me very sad because I have been wanting to read this book since probably I started in booktube in like 2018? Yeah, 2018-2017. And the cover is gorgeous and it's a retelling of the Medusa myth, so it's heartbreaking, but it is what it is. The last book is another book that I DNF'd and that is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. This is an adult mystery thriller following this young girl who returns to her hometown that she absolutely despises when her sister is found bound and gagged in the, and dead in the in, in like the water reserve or something or like the lake. However, the mystery happens is the mystery here is that she's not the only woman who ends up this who is found this way. I DNF'd it at like 32%, probably should have DNF'd it earlier. I understand where this is trying to go. It's trying to be like, it's trying to do unreliable narrator. It was trying to do this, this, and this, which is great. No offense there. But there were just too many unreliable narrators and too many, too many narrators in general to really enjoy this book and really understand what the frick the point is until you like end the book. Like, it, I, I didn't understand the point until I like literally said I'm giving up on reading this book and then it all clicked. I, which makes me a little sad because I, I do enjoy Paula Hawkins' writing. I think I'll be a little bit more wary when I come pick, pick up her books the next time around. Um, because unreli unreliable narrators with this many narrators is just a pain in the butt. And you have to really just narrow it down to like your core 3 and not your core 50. Um, yeah, so hopefully this will find a better home and hopefully someone will love it and enjoy it. I did not. But that is it for the um, books that I am unhauling. What was... Uh, no, Trace, we don't do that. that. For the books that I am unhauling. I, you know, it's January. Let's just cleanse ourselves of all the bad energy now and hope that in 2022 we will have nothing but good vibes from here on out. Speaking it into existence. Um, for all of us. If you guys have read any of these books and feel the same or feel differently, let me know in the comments why and we'll have a nice little discussion. But until next time, hopefully your weekend gets better than your week if your week's been really crappy. But if, you know, that's my hope for y'all. Um, but until my next video, hopefully you guys stay safe and I'll see you guys then. Bye!